moths here are hawk moths of the Sphingidae. Look at the size of that one there. For scale, that's the size of my hand. And they're all exactly the same species with this distinctive eye spot here and that wonderful coloration here in the, in the hind wing. Whoa! Something really quite extraordinary has happened here. My light trap has actually conned these swifts and they'd actually flown into the wall. This one here, he's stunned but alert. And I think he might head off. Come on, fella, please be all right. Oh, thank goodness for that. Suddenly, there's a noise from within the mammal trap. No, 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 no. Come back, come back, where are you? Oh, God, no! Oh, he's in there. He's in there. Oh, he's beautiful. You're right, I'm not going to hurt you. Look at the size of the ears and the spread of the whiskers. This is definitely a creature that's accustomed to hunting at night. And it's ever so pretty. There have been very, very few species of mammals recorded on the top of Tapuis, and new mammals are found so rarely these days. But that is an extraordinary find. Makes the whole trip worthwhile. They could only bring enough supplies for three days. Now it's time to go home. Last night was definitely in my top 10 wildlife moments. Everything happened at once, you know, first of all the swifts, then these moths everywhere, and then we found that mouse. We've only had three days to do a rapid assessment of what lives up here on the top, but even so, I think we've had some major successes, and I'm sure that some of the animals we've found are new to science. But even more tantalizing are those footprints we've found of some unknown animal and I just hope that someone gets a chance to come back and find out what that is. It's kind of one of the big tragedies of my life that I was born now, when it's so hard to find really wild places that people haven't been to. And it does your heart good to come somewhere like this that is not only totally undiscovered, but is so special. Gordon has been pulled away from breakfast. One of Guyana's most rarely seen creatures is high in the trees right next to camp. It's just up in this tree right here. I've never seen a harpy eagle before. I really didn't think we'd, we'd see one here. It's enormous. What I'd like to try and do is get a show up, and that way I can get the long lens to its full extent and hopefully get a really close shot of it. Please don't go anywhere. This is just smash and grab filming. You've got to try and find a position and just get what you can. Because this bird is gonna fly and we're never gonna see it again. Okay, to make sure everything's running. Oh, wow, look at that. You know what? If the Jaguar's the most difficult mammal to see, the harpy eagle is definitely the most difficult bird to see. Beautiful. Is it easy in this place to um, say every second day, this is the most amazing thing I've seen, this is the rarest thing that I've seen, but honestly, there is more chance of a jaguar doing the fandango through our camp than finding a harpy eagle. He's got the remains of a monkey, you can just see his back legs. That's what harp eagles do. They're such a huge birds of prey. They catch big primates. And they, their claws are so powerful. They'll grab a monkey, grab it by the body with one claw, grab it by the head. Look at those talons, they're enormous. Huge. That size. The harpy is the most powerful eagle in the world and stands a metre tall. Without a doubt, 
This is like finding diamonds at the head of this river. The further we get away from people, there's more animals. And the fact that you've got a, an animal like a harpy eagle is just a good indication that there must be many monkeys here. And many monkeys mean you've got a very um, healthy habitat. And it's worrying that it's completely unprotected. They could really mess this area up in a very short space of time, and that's terrifying. Unreal, this is so, so unbelievably rare. It is the Holy Grail. Okay, it's gonna go, it's gonna go. This could be the last moments we have with this bird. The Harpy Eagle is the final discovery for the team. They'll soon be heading home. The expedition has produced important evidence. This is one of the greatest unspoiled rainforests in the world. There are so few places that are pristine and untouched. This is one of them. And personally, I think that should never change. From the treetops to its watery depths, they've uncovered new, strange, and rare creatures. They've been burnt, bitten, and had narrow escapes. They've catalogued and photographed hundreds of rainforest animals. There should be room on this earth to keep 6% of the land surface area, a very small area, in which resides the majority of all the earth species of animals and plants. Thank you. For George, there's one last task, delivering the scientific report to the Guyanese president. Here is a, a very brief report from, from our, our trip, um, which just outlines what we did, and, and obviously that there'll be more coming out of this in the next few months. Every report, they've all recognized the importance of rainforests, especially tropical rainforests, in climate change, their contribution to, to the mitigation or, or the reduction of greenhouse gases. And what we, we all find is that this particular area is one of the richest uh, in terms of species probably anywhere on the planet. It's, it's incredibly rich. Shortly after the team returned home, the president of Guyana made an unprecedented move. He approached the British government to offer the intact forest as a global resource to help alleviate climate change in return for financial help. No decision has yet been made. The world is just beginning to recognize the enormous value of rainforests, not only as home to millions of species, but as part of the solution to a global problem. The family history of Patsy Kensett holds dark secrets next on BBC One, but from bad faith comes good in the first of the new series of Who Do You Think You Are?